Welcome back to Sport on 7. Uh, so we're in the middle of the T20 World Cup qualifiers at the moment. 16 teams competing in the UAE to get to the World Cup being staged in Sri Lanka later this year. Now, as it was St. Patrick's Day on Saturday, we felt it necessary to chat to the Ireland cricket team. I spoke to former captain Trent Johnston about the future of Irish cricket. At first, we spoke about how wins against England at last year's World Cup must be great experiences to build on for the team as they work towards their targets. Absolutely. I think, you know, we don't get much of a chance to play in front of the TV like our, you know, our, uh, our brothers and sisters in the rugby league, or, or sorry, rugby union and, and, and football and, um, you know, the Gaelic sports. You know, we're very much still a minority sport over there, so... Whenever we get an opportunity on the TV, we've got to take it with both hands and, you know, to perform uh, very well in that World Cup and, you know, even 2007 and, you know, the 2020 and 2009 when we made it through to the Super 8s, um, you know, that's all helped with raising a profile of cricket and, you know, it's nice to walk down the street and see kids and, you know, playing cricket out, outside their houses and, you know, talking about cricket and, you know, it's, it certainly is from, exactly from where I come from, Australia, you know, it's sort of part of the religion there. Um, you know, it would be cricket in the summer and sort of uh, a rugby sport in, in, in the winter. But, um, you know, to hear the kids talking about cricket there, we're, we're slowly making inroads into, you know, the, the, the bigger sports. I was going to say, because I mean, if you look at stadiums like the Aviva Stadium, it's packed out for a rugby game. But you can see the passion with the kids in Dublin and in Ireland uh, for cricket as well now. Can, yeah, absolutely. It's growing. You know, like I mentioned, the development officers are, are doing a great job in going into the schools and you know, hopefully infiltrating and, and taking away a few of those, uh, those, those kids that wanted to play rugby or soccer or the GAA and we might get them playing cricket. So um, you know, I think that's, that's the great thing that, that Cricket Island have done and having sort of poured all their eggs into one basket. You know, um, like with the senior men's team, you know, they're, they're, they're employing development officers all around the country and you know, that's, that can only help the, help the game. You know, this, this squad of players here are not going to be around forever. We've got to bring the next generation through and then the next generation after that. So, um, you know, Cricket Island are very aware of that. And, um, our sponsors are very aware of that. Sports Council as well. So, you know, it's only good because, you know, all those people have, have got their heads screwed on and, and know which direction Irish cricket should be going. Ireland have said they'd like a test play nation by 2020 and to help with that uh, progress, 50,000 people they want playing cricket in Ireland by that time. Is that possible? Obviously, with the passion, it, it must be doable. Absolutely, you know, and I think that, you know, our, our friends here at the ICC can help us by giving us a little bit more money and we can develop the game. You know, we've got a lot, of, lot, a lot to do in those, um, you know, seven years before 2012, um, sort of uh, 2020 comes around. Um, you know, we've got to get a first-class structure together, um, you know, and uh, to, you know, there's a lot of money to sort of set that up. Um, you know, and uh, like you mentioned, 50,000 people playing the sport. You know, it's it's not unrealistic. You know, I'm sure that they have, you know, quite considerable numbers playing in New Zealand. And we have the same sort of population. So, um, you know, if we can get somewhere near that, it'd certainly be a great achievement. Let's talk about your time here in Dubai. Obviously, here to qualify for that T20 World Cup later in the year in Sri Lanka. The facilities here are superb at uh, Sports City and around the UAE. Yeah, absolutely first class. Um, you know, I think the ICC have, have really set up a good base here. You know, they have their academy here. And, you know, we were here before the last World Cup and in preparation and, you know, They've got great wickets. Uh, even if it, you know, if it, even if it does rain once once a year over here, they've got the indoor facility there, and they've got great facilities in there. And you know, even the practice wickets are sort of are designed to be the same, like different wickets all around the world. So they've got every base covered, and you know, it's great facilities. Um, you know, the hotel and the accommodation is excellent as well. So you know, hopefully we can have we can have a good tournament here. And of course, you're one of the favourites to progress to Sri Lanka. How do you see the next couple of weeks going? That's oh, going to be very tough. Um, you know, I, I, I said the other day, there's probably eight to ten teams that can win the competition. You know, 2020 cricket's a funny game. Um, we think that we're a good chance of beating the, the full member countries because it brings you a lot closer to them. So, you know, the teams that are probably ranked eight, nine, ten will be thinking the same that they can beat Ireland. So, um, you know, hopefully we can we can put our head down and, you know, put our, our best foot forward because I think that if we can, you know, execute the plans that we want to do, uh, there's certainly no reason why we can't be going to Sri Lanka in, in September. With the hopes for Irish cricket over the next decade or so, do you feel the pressure uh, to really perform so that you keep the momentum up? I think so, and I think that the thing we touched on earlier was a development, is bringing the next generation through. You know, myself being 37, it's probably going to be my last year. And you know, even though we have sort of a you know a squad that's probably average age of about 27, 28, <clears throat> we certainly want to be bringing the Paul Sterlings and George Dockrells, you know, continuing seeing those kids coming through. So that's a massive uh, challenge for us. Um, 
you know, we have been and, and are the best associate team. Um, so, you know, everyone's going to be wanting to knock us off. So we understand that. Um, but, you know, we think that we keep on raising that bar for ourselves. And, uh, you know, our preparation going into this tournament has, has been outstanding. So, you know, we've just got to keep that, that influx of... Uh, good players coming through and, and keep strengthening their squad and you know and keep you know cricket alive in Ireland. And let's talk about your career. A highlight for you, something to inspire the kids who are, you know, in Dublin on the streets looking for something to do. What can you tell them from your career which will make them go, you know what, I'm gonna go and play cricket tomorrow? Yeah, well, I think it's playing on the world stage against the best. Um, you know, the last two 50 over World Cups, we've we've beaten Pakistan, we've we've beaten Bangladesh and we've, and we've beaten England. Um, a four member country so you know that's 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 what it's all about for me is being a part of that and being a part of that journey being a part of that process and you know I just don't think you can get any higher than that and you know I think that you can look down the line probably in 10 or 15 years time there's no reason why we can't be in a semi-final of a, of a World Cup or winning a World Cup you know because the, the players that we have here are good enough you know if we can get more games against those bigger teams um, more exposure in our own country you know I think that that can only help the game develop in Ireland. Trent, best of luck over the next two weeks for getting to Sri Lanka and best of luck with Ireland over the next few years. Thank you very much. We'll have all the results of the T20 qualifiers next week on Sport on 7, who will make it to Sri Lanka in September. Now, let's go up the road from Sports City to Jumeirah Golf Estates, where, of course, the race to Dubai culminates each year. Wayne Johnston, no relation to Trent, is the director of golf there, and he'd like you to be the next world number one. Here's how you can become a better player on the golf course. Good afternoon and welcome to the Jumeirah Golf Estates Tour Academy. My name is Wayne Johnson and today we're going to work on greenside bunker play. The first thing to appreciate with the greenside bunker is that your sand iron is made differently from all of the other clubs in the bag. It's done in such a way where the leading edge is much higher than the trailing edge. We call this the bounce angle. The idea of the bounce angle is to allow the club to skim through the sand rather than dig into the sand during the swing. The more we open the face, the more we maximize this skim effect, the easier the ball pops out of the sand. So in terms of technique, the first thing we want to do, we open the club face, keep our thumb down the center line of the shaft. Having an open face, I set my stance a little bit open. So my body is aiming a little left of target, the club face a little right of target. I position the ball very much towards my forward foot and maintain weight on my left side throughout the swing. And we really want to work on nice stability of the lower body throughout the stroke. From here, we're making a long and lazy back swing and follow through. The goal is to hit the sand before the ball. So we're trying to hit the sand one to two centimeters behind the ball, splashing the sand onto the green. Let's try one. Now, if you work with those techniques, you're going to have a lot more fun around the golf course, especially from those bunkers. Easy. Uh, right, next on Sport on 7, we'll run through all the big results of the last seven days in sport. We will also look back at a big weekend of diving action in Dubai. The world's best were here. And next, I find myself standing five metres above the water with one of Canada's big hopes. Yeah. 